Hello, this is Tom Bonner, and I am going to do a video tutorial on setting up the ability to stream multiple audio sources into a Zoom call. This can be very handy if you are streaming games such as D&D &D on Twitch or Castles and Crusades or Pathfinder. Uh, most importantly, though, this is very handy if you need to stream multiple audio sources into Zoom and you don't have an actual physical mixer with all of those sources. The software that we're using is Virtual Audio Cable. This is a paid software for a single license. It's about $30, but I do find it to be very, very good. There are free ones available, but they limit you in the number of virtual cables that you can have. Some of them only limit to one or two. In this case, we need at least three virtual audio cables. There is a trial version to the software I'm going to recommend but the trial version will periodically say the word trial, 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 just over and over and over again into the whatever you're streaming into. The other software that we're going to be using is called the Voice Meter. I am specifically going to look at the one called Banana. There are a couple other versions uh, just as a basic. Banana and there's also Potato. Banana is handy because it allows for three channels and several outputs. The first software that you're going to want to look at is Virtual Audio Cable. The website I will link in the description for this. Pretty much what it does is it takes a playback device, any type of virtual speaker, and pipes it into the matching microphone cable. So in this case, line 1 pipes directly into line 1, line 2 pipes directly into line 2. For mixing, this will come in handy, um, and I'll show how we're going to set this up. To purchase it, just click on purchase. If you're a facility where you're or a house where you're streaming multiple things, getting discount license packs are handy. For businesses, I would recommend using the licensing. This is especially important if you are using this as part of a stream that generates a lot of revenue. The other software is Voice Meter. Notice the two E's in Meter. This one's very easily Googleable. And we're going to look at the banana software. For ease of use, I've already purchased Virtual Audio Cable and I already have a download of Voice Meter Banana. Voice Meter Banana is 100% free. It is a very, very nice software. The first thing that you're going to want to do is install Virtual Audio Cable. It is noted that you will want to restart the system after this is installed. If you have another installer or another previous installation of this file, you will get a prompt. Um, being that I uninstalled my previous installation for this video, I may or may not get it. I wish it would stay over on the direct desktop I want, but You'll want to make note of the installation path C, Program Files, Virtual Audio Cable, because if there's anything in that path already, even if the folder is empty, the software will yell at you. It will give a prompt saying, hey, you need to remove this folder. I'm just verifying my install uninstallation went well. Okay. Click on Install. It'll say device driver successfully installed. It'll go through its standard prompting. And it'll say that this has been hard coded to work directly. I don't want to open the system audio properties quite yet. It'll prompt that this installation is complete. And mine, surprisingly, did not prompt for the ability to reboot. 
Before we go into voice meter, we're going to want to set how many virtual audio cables we're going to want to install. Click on your start menu, type in VAC, and the very first option is the control panel. This you will want to open up as administrator. To do so, you right click on it, run as administrator. You'll get a pop-up dialog box. This is um, this software needs to be run as administrator, blah, blah, blah. Just click on yes for that. What we're going to change is the cables. By default, it's set to one. We want to set this to three. So all you do is you change it, click on set. This bottom will adjust. It's like, uh, mine won't let me change because I've got things set already. But set it to three. This will adjust down. And the last setting that we're going to do, just so that we know which one's going where, is in the change system sounds. Once it opens, you'll get a dialog box such as this. You want to go to playback. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's now three different settings that have been chosen. Virtual line one, line two, and line three. What I typically do, being that I'm going to be using this in a zoom environment, I'll set line one, I'll rename it under properties to zoom from players. And hit OK. I will just so that I know which one I'm going with, I'll go into recording, and I will do the same thing down here. I will find virtual line one, and I'll name it the same exact thing, being that this passes through from speaker to microphone, every, each one in a one-to-one. -one. Hit OK. Line two, I will typically set up as uh, apps, so what this will do is we're going to set this as the default playback device for Windows. So anything that is on your desktop sounds, whether it be programs such as Tailspire, uh, YouTube, anything that you want outputting to the players, we're going to use this line application. You can rename it anything that you want. I just rename it applications for ease of use. Do the same on this side. And the final one that we're going to name line three, or whichever one that you need to be the default, is going to be zoom two players. So this is going to be the final output being broadcast into your meeting software. So once we have that all set, what you'll want to do is go into playback and set the default playback device to whatever one is named for the applications. That is defaults. You'll see a little checkbox. The other ones are still going to be usable. Zoom lets you choose your playback device, and the software that we're going to install lets you choose the final device that is playing into your system. That next installation is going to be on voice meter. Um, by default, I want banana. If you want to see the changes, the standard voice meter has two channels where you can select the input and several virtual cables where you can't rename them, and then two outputs. Banana lets you do three inputs, two virtual inputs, and several outputs and potato is much bigger if you have a, have a more complex situation where you're running three or four audio channels this can be very handy especially if you have multiple microphones going into your computer if you're streaming a group of people and you're using say the headphone input and the microphone input on the back of a system for multiple mics in a room. But we want to use banana just because of the simplicity of it. 
just go down to the voice meter exe file and this will give the downloader it even tells you what it's named voice meter pro setup I've moved it to my desktop. By default, this will be in your C downloads folder. I apologize for the blank screen. Windows user authentication control. Just click on install. It'll go through. It will tell you you must reboot your system in order to finalize installation. And of course, they give you a pop up saying check out our other cables or other softwares. Let's close this guy out. Now to open up Voice Meter, just click on your Start menu, type in Voice Meter, and we want the one that says Banana. Upon opening, as default, this will just say Input 1, Input 2, Input 3. To rename them to whatever you want, you can right click on the blue header and type in whatever you want. In this case, I have headset, which is a physical microphone. Right now I'm wearing it for this tutorial. You hit enter, it'll save it. To change the input, you click on where it has, like right here it says voice meter VIO. You click right on where this one says microphone. Choose whichever input that you want, and then it'll automatically minimize. Where things will get a little bit more difficult is we want to set up the YouTube and apps which is going to be the audio source coming from your system that you want to pipe to your meeting software. So that's the reason for this name. This is going to be the virtual audio cable that we made that says applications. Right here, we'll want to choose the one that says WDM. We can choose the MME if we want. It doesn't matter. They're both going to be the same microphone source. The next channel is we're going to name it Zoom. And this can be Zoom from players, because this is what you need to be able to hear. And the microphone source that we're choosing is going to be the one that's labeled Zoom from Players. The last bit of setup that we're going to need is the hardware output. We're going to use A1 and A2. A1 we're going to want to have set up as your headphones. So anything that you need to be able to hear. This will be a physical source. So in this case I would choose WDM headphones and a two is going to be zoom to players. So I don't hear myself. So what this section is is this is gonna be the bus outputs. So anything that you need the players to hear will be, you'll need to check A2. If you check A1 and your headphones was checked under A1, you're going to hear yourself in your headphones. For the apps, if you need to be able to hear them as well as your players, you're going to use both A1 and A2 so they're highlighted green. And finally, the zoom from players you're going to want to set as A1. That way you can hear them. If you click on A2, the players are going to hear themselves in the meeting software. And what this will do is it'll allow you to change your own volume. These are just volume sliders that you can see. If you're looking at the headset, the microphone, it changes as I talk. If you need more gain, if people are saying that you're quiet, this allows you to add a little bit extra volume to the final output. If you need to turn applications down, so that way you're just setting up a mood and you don't want to overpower, you can slide this down the 
lower the negative number is, in this case it's negative 29.8, the quieter it's going to be. And for final, if you need to boost your player volume output to whatever your streaming is, you can do this. Many times when you're recording, you want the actual indicators to be in the green. If you start adding too much volume, it'll start clipping and it'll turn red. And for whoever you're casting to, whether that be players, Twitch, YouTube, whatever it may be, it's going to be very loud on their side. You want to just boost it just high enough where it's barely touching the red, and wherever that is, bring it down a couple decibels. In Zoom, or whatever your meeting is, when it asks you to set up your microphone, you'll want to set up the one that says Zoom two players. Um, being that right now I don't have a Zoom call going on, I can't set that up. The headphones that you're going to want is going to be the same set as the um, Zoom from players. So when setting up Zoom or your meeting software, the headphones are going to be the Zoom from players. The microphone is going to be the Zoom to players. Hopefully this helps with setup. I do know this is a little bit of a tedious video. But this is a very good setup, as you can see. The Blue Box RPG community is actually going to start using this for the Fall of Red Dawn stream. The other streams that are hosted by John, uh, such as Tears of Aired on Blue Box RPG and Greyhawk Awakening, he actually has a nice Behringer sound mixer that pipes all this in. So we're going to be showcasing this or at least using it, I shouldn't say showcasing, but using this on the background for all of that uh, sound mixing capability. So hopefully this helps, and I hope you have a good day.